In this video, you will learn how to import your Rhino model into Revit to create a more detailed digital model of your project and to develop documentation and presentation drawings. I will show you my own workflow on how I model between Rhino and Revit and how to use the appropriate architectural tools efficiently to develop your own project. We will continue to use the same accessory dwelling unit project that I started in the previous video. I will be submitting this ADU to the City of Los Angeles for plan check. And if you want to check out that video and want to learn my design process on how to start an architectural project, check out the first video of this series, which is linked in the description of this video. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Vlanka and I'm the principal of Verve Architecture Workshop. I'm also an educator living in Los Angeles where I teach architecture studios and courses. When starting a new project, I always start with sketching. However, to test my ideas, I use Rhino to translate my sketches into three-dimensional forms so that I can have a better understanding of space, scale, and form of my design projects. This allows me to model faster and iterate efficiently. Rhino also allows me the freedom to model intricate and complex forms and shapes that could be time consuming and difficult when building a physical model. When building in Rhino, I start to establish constraints such as maximum square footage, maximum height to limit my massing model. Within this constraint, I create a series of iteration to test forms and ideas. Since this project is intended to be affordable and practical, the form of the project is relatively simple. However, I always start digitally modeling in Rhino rather than in Revit so that I'm not yet constrained by information that is still unknown at this stage of the project. In Rhino, I have the freedom to model freely and continue to iterate and test ideas easily. At this stage, the model is still developing and considered as a massing studies. Knowing that you will need to transfer your Rhino model to Revit, there are best practices to keep in mind to have a seamless transition between the two softwares. First is to make sure that you build your massing model in Rhino as a closed solid poly surface. Having edges that are not joined in your Rhino model, also known as naked edges, could pose an error in your Revit file. So make sure that you check before exporting your Rhino model to avoid any issues later on. Also, having a shared origin between Rhino and Revit is important to continue to work between the two programs. In Rhino, I recommend to maintain the default origin, which is at 000, and make sure to know where your model in relation to this coordinate. Later in this video, I will show you how Revit uses the important origin to place your model in the file and what is considered as an origin point in Revit. For this project, I will select this massing option as the model to export so that I can use this model to create walls and roof in Revit. To export, select the geometry you want to export in Rhino, go to File, Export with Origin, I would like to maintain the default Rhino origin, so I will type 000. In the Save as Type, select ACIS or .sat file. In the new version of Revit, you can now import or link the Rhino.3dm file directly to Revit. However, since I would like to use this massing model as a base model, to use for building Revit elements, I will need to export as an 
ACIS so I can import the Rhino model in Revit as massing and interact and use it as a base for my Revit project. In Revit, start a new file. You can use a generic template by Autodesk. For me, I will use my own template that I use for all my projects that I build to have a specific graphic settings, views, and sheet that makes all my projects consistent and efficient. After you create a new Revit file, go to a site view and you will see these three symbols. Survey point, project base point, internal origin, and if you don't have these coordinates in your view, you need to go to the visibility graphics or VG, then type S, then scroll down to site. Here, make sure that you have the project base point survey and internal origin check to show it in your view. First, let's talk about the project base point, which is the blue circle with an X in the middle. This is the internal coordinates as it relates to the building in your Revit file. This base point is used to set the angle difference between True North and Project North. True North is the real world North orientation of the project site, while the Project North is the established North in the Revit file for better modeling, drafting, and layout. Next is the survey point. This is the shared coordinate among link files in your Revit. Its location is based on provided survey of real world project site. This is important, especially on larger projects when you have multiple Revit discipline linked into your project file. Finally is the internal origin. This coordinate is fixed and cannot be moved. So when you import a file in Revit, this will be the origin that will be referenced inside your Revit. As a default, when you start a new project in Revit, all coordinates are in the same location. And for this project, we will keep it at that same location. In my project, I like to create the first intersection of the project grid a and 1 at this intersection as a starting point. To import our massing model from Rhino, in Revit, go to Architecture, then Component, Model in Place, now scroll down to Mass, then click OK. Let's give it a name. Let's call it Rhino Massing. Now this will give you a different ribbon. And to import the massing, you will need to go to Insert, Import CAD, select the ACIS file you've exported from Rhino. Make sure you have the ACIS file type if you don't see it in your folder. In the positioning, select Auto, Origin to Origin. This will place the Rhino massing using the Rhino we have specified in Rhino when exporting and the internal origin in Revit. Now let's finish creating the massing. Now go to a 3D view so we can see the Rhino massing. I'm going to change the visual style to shaded for clarity. To start Building from your important massing, go to Architecture. Let's start with the wall first. So select wall by face. Select a wall type you want. For me, I'm going to use this assembly. I like to set my wall location to center line. Then select the face of the massing you want to build the wall. This method is not perfect. You will need to clean up the model later on, but now you will have generated the framework of your design in Revit, and this will save you a ton of time, especially if you modeled complex shapes in Rhino. Now let's repeat the process with the roof element. Again, go to architecture, roof, roof by face, 
pick the face location. For me, I will select face on top. Then select the face you want to build roof. Now here's the difference when building roof by face. You want to make sure that you click create roof when you're done. Otherwise, it will not build the roof element. After you build the necessary element and framework in Revit, you can either hide or delete the massing. For this project, I will just delete my massing in my Revit file, since I will no longer need it for creating and building in Revit. Of course, there are other ways and workflow to transfer your Rhino model into Revit. And to see other techniques, check out my other video how to establish a workflow between Rhino and Revit, where I use the Rhino Inside Revit plugin. Now that you have the basic framework of your project in Revit, you can start to add the I in BIM. Revit is a tool to achieve BIM. Adding information in your digital model will make developing document set efficient and productive. I used Revit to also create architectural drawings, in addition to developing my construction document. This is what I think Revit as a tool is good at. If you need to keep modeling in Rhino for complex geometry, for example, here I develop a wall element using Grasshopper in Rhino, and I would like to import this design to my Revit file. You will need to go through the same process I showed you early on and use the same shared origin between the Rhino and Revit. But this time, I will just export the element I want to import in Revit and save it as a Rhino file, which is a .3dm. In Revit, again, you will need to go to Insert. You can either link or import this time. Linking a file just gives the ability to continually adjust the design in Rhino and the model will be updated in Revit. For this purpose, I will select Link to show you how you can continue to iterate in Rhino and transfer that to Revit. Again, make sure that the positioning is the origin to origin. This will place the same location where we modeled it in Rhino. But since we linked the Rhino model, now if we make any kind of design changes in Rhino, then resave it, it will update the model in Revit. To do that, you will need to go to Revit go to insert manage link under the CAD format tab select the file you want to update reload then hit OK now the imported model is updated in Revit this is a great technique to use to continue to design and develop complex form in Rhino which is faster to model than modeling complex form in Revit and to visualize how that complex form could affect your design. And that concludes this video. And if you learned something in this video, don't forget to click the like button, share, and leave a comment. I really appreciate any support for the channel. For the next video, we will continue to work on the same ADU project and I will show you techniques I use when creating my presentation drawings using the model we just created in Revit. Also, if you want to keep up to date on any future Verb architecture courses and products, sign up for our newsletter. I will leave the link in the description box.